tell you what. I love Miles Straw. You want to talk. So Straw had some beef with the fans. He climbed up to have a word. What, please, Quan, what was going on in left field before that when you ran into the wall? Uh, obviously, Quan was a little shaken up and had some cuts in his face. And, um, you know, there was a specific Yankee fan in left field that that was uh, celebrating Quan getting hurt. Um, it's just it's almost like it's just acts of violence. Um, you can't be you can't say stuff. You can't say stuff like that, especially when someone someone gets hurt. So I just let him out. I was like, listen, man, you can chirp all you want, but don't celebrate someone getting hurt. That's classless. That shouldn't be a thing. Um, you know, you can root for your team all you want. I'm not I'm not denying that. And honestly, I think it's, it's good for the game when when uh people are diehard fans but do it the right way there's a right way of doing things and um it's easy for them you know standing outside of the field to be able to do and say whatever they want but we're the ones that are out there busting our butts every day in and day out and the last thing that we need is people cheering for us to get hurt or people trying to get us hurt by throwing things on the field so like i said um um and i i will say this i appreciate uh the yankee players coming out and trying to control them and um and I, you know, have a lot of respect for that. So, Quan is the nicest guy on the planet, and that's my teammate. That's my brother. And um, some of the things that were said to him just for me wasn't going to fly. So, you know, my emotions got to me a little bit. But, um, you know, at that point, I feel like as a Yankees fan, you got to be excited for your team. You should be cheering, and you should never prey on someone's, you know, the guy went head first into a hard wall. Um, there's no business for saying the things those guys said to him. And, um, you know, it got to me a little bit, and I, you know, I said what I said, and, um, I, I, you know, if I were to do it again, I probably would have said the same thing. That's my guy, and, uh, you know, at that point, just cheer. You know, be happy your team tied the game up and uh, be a normal baseball fan and just enjoy what's going on. Yo, New York Yankees fans, yet again, it is Felix from LYNews.com. Like always, hola, como estas? Coming on after the Yankees walk-off, Glaber Torres. But let's talk about that little situation that happened in the ninth inning. Miles Strong. You see, when situations happen like this, it was a horrible look, by the way. I am not trying to defend the actions of these Yankees fans to get out, out the way. But when you have situations like these, you know, typical fans from other teams that hate the Yankees, they pounced all over this. At first glance, you might think, wow, look at these barbarians, these Yankees fans. But realistically, all that was Mal Straw's Fault. You see, if you're not old enough to remember, or if you've seen these highlights, in the NBA in about, what, 2004, there was a game, Pacers versus the Pistons, and Ron Artest had one of the ugliest brawls in, I'll say, sports history. If you've never seen it, you can look it up. Pause this video. So now that you're back... Tell me how Miles Straw's situation is no different. The only thing that stopped him was the outfield fence. I'm not condoning. Maybe those Yankees fans said something horrible to him and his teammate. But he's a paid professional athlete. He has to have thicker skin. For an example, let me read you a headline because everybody's grabbing this now. Cleveland's Miles Straw climbs Yankee Stadium wall to shut up heckling fans. So the reason why he did that is because a Yankees fan heckled Stephen Kwan, the left fielder of the Guardians, after he ran into the left field wall, that IKF double, and supposedly this fan heckled him and was talking about the cuts and bruises he sustained on that play. Look, that's horrible. The person that made fun of that is a horrible person. But these are paid professional athletes. They shouldn't have thicker skin. And the only reason why Miles Straw didn't uh, give that fan the one-hitter quitter is because he couldn't reach him. If, let's say, this was the NBA, like I said previously, it could have turned into another Ron Artest situation. Let's say Straw 
doesn't throw the first punch. But when you get close to fans like that, yap in your mouth, what do you think is going to happen? These are complete strangers. You don't know this person. You don't know if that fan is going to throw the first punch. This is why Miles Straw was the main instigator in this whole situation. Which led to Yankees fans after the game to throw things onto the field. Hitting umpires. Hitting players. Why did that happen? Oh, because Miles Straw and his teammate don't have thick skin. This whole fiasco would have been avoided if, again, Straw didn't do what he did. It could have been uglier. Was that an excuse for fans to throw things onto the field? Well, he certainly gave them an excuse. It's called crowd control. He gave these fans the excuse to do it. Miles Straw, because it was him that climbed that fence, is 100% at fault here. Point blank. Obviously, it was one of those unique situations. Obviously, you do not throw things. But it could have been avoided if they acted more professionally and went back to playing. Or even heckle them back. Talk some smack, but don't climb the fence. And dude, let's be realistic here. You did it in the South Bronx. What do you think is going to happen when you run up on a fan like Stone Cold Steve Austin? Yeah, what do you guys think? Do you agree or disagree with my take? Like always, leave your opinions in the comment section below. And like always, this has been Felix from MLYNews.com. Share, like, and subscribe, and I'll check you out next time. Before it hits the front page.